All right, what's up everybody? So today's gonna be a full upper body workout. I'm gonna start off with, it's like an incline uh, press slash fly and I'm gonna pair that up with a machine row. So uh, with that being said, let's get to it. I'll do a commentary for the rest. All right, what's up everybody? So I do wanna do a little bit of a commentary throughout today's workout and just go through uh, what's going on in my head through each lift, why I'm doing each lift, just a full on programming execution mindset commentary for this video. So the first lift that I'm doing here, as you can tell, uh, it's actually not much of a press anymore. It's pretty much just a fly at this point. So uh, when I first introduced this lift to my program, it was a little bit of a combo between a press and a fly. It was kind of like a like a neutral press with a, a decent stretch at the bottom more than a normal dumbbell press. So uh, 30 degree incline on here. And this is actually a pretty strict fly at this point. So while my reps have stayed the same and my weight has stayed the same, my form has actually made the lift more difficult because instead of pressing, I'm actually purely flying. So it's more chest. Uh, there's no triceps involved, no shoulders involved in that movement. So uh, even though the reps and the weight has stayed exactly the same as well as the volume, I'm actually progressing in that movement because my form is getting a little bit better. So uh, that's something that I didn't even necessarily realize until I saw the film of this. So uh, I guess that's good news. I'll probably up the weight, turn it into more of a press, and maybe do the same thing with, with 75 pounds or something. We'll see. Uh, this movement here, a machine row, a staple in my program. I think I've kept these in for almost almost a year and a half at this point. It's just such an incredible movement. It's easy recovery. It's just easy upper back volume in terms of recovery, uh, but it is definitely a difficult movement. It hurts your back a lot. Uh, it's not fun to be doing that, but easy volume. So uh, next movement, same thing, uh, just my second set there. And then my second set here, uh, same machine rows. On these, my mental cue is to flare my elbows out at about a 45 degree angle. The neutral grip is nice. I do sometimes go with a slightly narrower uh, 45 degree pronation grip. Both of them feel really good. I'm trying to pull with my shoulder blades and take my shoulder blades through a full range of motion. The next superset I'm going to be working on here is a behind the neck press. Uh, relatively new to the program, I want to say this is either week three or four, having behind the neck press in. I've only upped the weight a little bit so far. Um, I'm getting pretty close to meeting the rep goal. I think I stopped three or four reps shy uh, at just about failure for each set. So um, these, you definitely don't want to take the muscular failure, take them to technical failure. Um, yeah, maybe not the safest lift to completely fail on. So I, I usually leave one rep in reserve on those sets. Pairing this with a cable curl. On the other hand, this is something you can push very close to failure, if not past failure, a little bit with some cheat reps or some partials. These I push hard. I get the full range of motion for my biceps, go all the way down, um, with the exception of that lockout at the bottom that I don't think is necessary for bicep training, and then get all the way up as high as I can. So going nice and slow, controlling the weight, grinding out those last couple reps. Most people would have stopped a couple reps ago, but I'm still grinding out that last one right there and actually another here. So those are the reps that count, especially on isolation lifts like that. Back again to behind the neck press. Just so you guys know, um, I don't know why I just thought of this, but I'm doing three sets on everything. I only filmed the first two sets for each lift that I did. And the second set that you see for each lift in this video is in double speed. So uh, don't, don't make fun of my form or anything. Just know it's in double speed. So um, back to the bicep curls. This is in double speed. And this is probably still a little bit slower than some people go on them. So go nice and slow. Keep it controlled. That's going to be key. Up next, uh, this actually isn't a superset. I don't have anything else I need to pair with it. So I just do some overhead tricep extensions with the cable. These feel great. The way, the way that I'm working these into my program right now is I'm increasing reps and weight as I go on pretty much linearly. There is a little bit of uh, variance in form. My form does tend to get a little bit less strict as I go on. And that's actually intentional. I think sometimes we get a little bit too strict, especially with our isolation movements in terms of form. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing like a cheat form or a, a not so strict form for beginners. But I think if you're in that intermediate kind of later, later stages of intermediate or advanced lifting, using some cheat form, and you'll especially see it in my second set, uh, to push these close to failure and just milk the most you can out of these lifts, I think that's a good idea. The way that I do these is I'll just 
slowly progress. I'll add weight and I'll add reps slowly over time with the rep goal system. And then what I end up doing eventually is doing a form reset. So I'll decrease the weight a tad or keep the weight the same and just decrease the reps and nail my form. And that's okay if I lose some performance because I'm, I'm basically doing a different lift at that point since my form is going to be different. So as you can see, little elbow flare there, cheating a lot on the last couple of reps, but that's good for these movements. It's good for isolation lifts um, in certain situations, as I said. Up next, standard, regular, old school pushdowns. These, uh, the mental cues that I like to use here, <clears throat> uh, just push as hard as I can, keep it controlled and keep my elbows in place. I also, as you can tell, like to bend forward at my hips. This gives you much better leverage on the movement. It takes a lot of the core out of it. I used to fail these lifts, uh, or I used to fail tricep pushdowns because my abs weren't strong enough, and uh, I don't want that to be happening anymore. So I bend forward at the hips, keep it pretty strict, but I just push hard. There's always going to be that sticking point right towards that midway towards the bottom of the movement. So push through that, use a little bit of cheat if you have to, grind these out and you're good. To finish off the workout, um, these are just wrist rollers very straightforward here obviously this is in double speed uh, i think that's pretty obvious here so um i just do uh extension and flexion back and forth a bunch of times um i'll count each each time the weight goes all the way up then all the way back down i count that as one uh rep so i don't want to count each little turn my wrist makes but with that being said video is over so thanks for watching i will see you guys in the next one